So the most common, let's say, materials used in piping are either steels, and guys, you cannot imagine how many steel types there are in the market. You have steels with low concentration of uh, carbon, you have a high concentration of carbon, you have a many rare metals such as let's say, manganese or even zinc, copper, and of course the basis of steel is iron. Many metals such as copper, actually there are many, let's say, special pipes that use silver or other precious metal, of course, they are very very small and very very technical speaking. There are many alloys such as brass and a combination of steel and so on. Plastics are getting a little bit more use right now. For example, PVC is the most common one, I think. PVC is this material right here, probably you've seen it before. It's used in the industry and also in the house. For example, if the sewage system of your house will probably use PVC and transport all the poop all the way to the sewer system, which will be probably steel material. And ceramics, probably you're wondering why do we still use ceramics? Well, we have many state-of-the-art ceramics types for different type of operations, but this became, of course, basic on the Roman ages where they used, they didn't have that much steel, they didn't want to expand copper because copper was good for, uh, let's say, production of weapons. Brass and so on was also for weapons. And plastic was not still in the era, so ceramic was a good idea. So let me show you some steel. You can how to recognize a steel piping. Well, you will probably see this very shiny gray color. And if it's very old, you will see that it's getting oxidized. It's not nice, but still you can operate them. And this is not good to operate because you may get a little bit of oxides in your material of operation. So I will definitely recommend you to use a very steel piping system in very good conditions. Copper is very common especially for gas, natural gas or even liquefied petroleum gases. They are also used for cold water, uh, warm water and so on. It's good because it is relatively cheap and it's very ductile. You can do this shape very easily. You don't need that much energy as with steel. And well, it's you have also these little pieces and so on. And that's for copper. PVC, well, I told you it's used in the bathroom piping. Here and here. And they have many fittings because it's plastic, it's a little bit easier to get different shapes because in, with steel and copper you are kind of limited on the shape but in the plastic well it's way easier to let's say thermoset that plastic shape and as I told you ceramic piping we have many state-of-the-art ceramics depends on what type of application do you have of course and yeah let's see for example this old house has a ceramic piping system for Let's say water goes here and then goes right here and goes away. It does the work. The work is essentially transport fluid from the roof out of the house to the streets. So that's on material. And one thing I want to cover on material is the material roughness, which will be analyzed in the next. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access, not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, if you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here, the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So, for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. You were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.